Hi, and welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to do one more AMC problem from our collection of two variable linear Diophantine problem sets. And uh, this problem, I think, actually appeared in the 2015 uh, AMC 10B, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a good problem because it involves a lot of different uh, problem solving skills that uh, will come in handy in, in various other problems. So uh, let's take a look at what we have. We have the town of Hamlet has three people for each horse, four sheep for each cow, three ducks for each person. Which of the following could not possibly be the total number of people, horses, sheep, cows, and ducks in Hamlet? Oh boy, what a mouthful. Um, so in this case, we want to try to unpack this problem. Now, one thing that's kind of nice about most AMC problems, in fact all, as far as I'm aware, is that they usually involve categories that are pretty easy to represent with symbols. So in this case, we could use P, to represent the number of people, H for horses, S for sheep, C for cows, D for ducks. You know, I'm not aware of any type of AMC problem where they would use categories such as, you know, people, porcupines, pumpkins, peppercorns, you know, they, they just tend not to do that. They try to make it easier for you to symbolize the problem. So let's go ahead and use the, the symbols of uh, P, H, S, C, and D that is suggested kind of naturally from the phrasing of the problem. And let's try to unpack what these uh, connections are. So we have three people for each horse. So I would represent that with a 3P that I would connect with sort of an equal arrow to the H. Four sheep for each cow. So I would represent that with a 4S connected with an up arrow to the cow symbol. And the last is three ducks for each person. So I would represent that with a 3D connected with an up arrow to the number of, of people. And at this point, the goal that I'm, I'm trying to sort of gravitate towards is to try to represent the total number of people with as few, or as total number of, of uh, elements in each category in as few variables as possible. So I'm trying to understand what these connections are here. And it, it appears to me that we can connect the ducks to the people. The people we can connect back up to the horses. And the sheep we can connect up with the cows and the ducks we can connect up with the people. So it, it appears from this connection of, of relations we can basically represent the total population just in terms of ducks and sheep here. So these are sort of the key uh, variables that I, I think we're kind of going to gravitate towards. Number of sheep and number of ducks. So let's go ahead and write that now. We have the number of people equal to three times the number of ducks. We have the number of horses equal to three times the number of people, but that's equal to three times the number of ducks. We have the sheep just equal to the sheep. We have the cows are equal to four times the sheep. And we have the ducks just equal to the ducks. So now we can sum these up and we come to the conclusion that the total population is given by, let's see, the total number of uh, duck terms, 3D, 9D, and a D, that's 13D, plus the total number of sheep terms, S, and a 4S, that's 5S. And okay, this is a good equation now. We have an equation in integers. We know that if we have an equation with two variables in integers, we can normally solve for that relationship. So we, we seem like we're in good shape here. But we basically have kind of the reverse problem of what we're used to. We're typically given an N that we know of, and we're trying to solve for, say, D and S. But in this case, uh, we're trying to determine what values of n can lead to possible solutions for DNS. So this is kind of akin to the uh, the Chicken McNugget uh, problem that I discussed on one of the previous videos. And there really is no there really is no systematic way to do this type of problem to try to determine which n's are possible and which are not. There are ways in which you can kind of limit the search, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But generally, you have to do this one by, by brute force. And the, the simplest way to do that is just to, to write out a table of how the 5S and the 13D uh, terms can contribute. So let's go ahead and do that. So the 5S term can contribute in with a, a 0, a 5, a, a 10, a 15, 20, 25, and 30. Uh, the 13D can contribute with 0, 13, 26, 39, and then we have to do all the addition terms. Uh, it's not too hard to just fill out this table because the patterns are pretty easy to see. Uh, 31, 36, 41, 46, 51, 56, 
54, 49, 54, 59, 54, 69. Okay, so uh, let's take a look and see what, what, what values are, are possible to achieve with this uh, Diophantine equation down here. And what we see is that uh, we can certainly achieve 41. Uh, I don't see a 47. A 59, I see a 59. A 61, I don't see the 61 here, but the way this row plays out, I think there certainly can be a 61. And, yeah, of course, a 66 as well. So we see we have these four numbers that we basically be able to account for, 41, 59, 61, and 66. So essentially our answer, as we can see, is 47. And we could have gotten to this answer a little quicker using the methods that we learned from the Chicken McNugget theorem. So go back and check that if you want. But you can basically deduce from, this, uh, from the coefficients of this equation that uh, the critical number that we're looking for is 13 minus 1 times 5 minus 1, which is 12 times 4, which equals 48. And that's significant because for n greater than or equal to 48, we know that we always can achieve that for this uh, Diophantine uh, equation. Uh, always achievable. So we see that that, some, that limits our search quite a bit. So essentially for C, D, and E, we don't even need to consider. And we just basically have to decide, can we achieve 41 or 47? And if you follow this result a little further, the Chicken McNuggets theorem also states that for the n, just one below this threshold, that is never achievable. And that basically points you to 47. So anyway, uh, this is kind of a brute force problem, but it involves some interesting uh, kind of problem-solving skills for, for reducing and sort of organizing the information that's given in a way that allows you to uh, kind of reduce it to a two-variable linear Diophantine equation. And it's a pretty good example on how to do that. So uh, hope that was uh, understandable, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.